Isn't modern society great with all this technology surrounding us in all directions? It's like a cocoon of sweet, fluffy silicon. There are chips in my fitness tracker, my Bluetooth headset, mobile phone, car keys, and that's just on my body. At all times in the Kane household, there are dozens of internet devices connected to my Wi-Fi router. I'm not sure how we got to this point, but there's one thing I know for sure, more is better. If I could use two smartphones at the same time, I totally would. And I'm sure you all agree that without all this technology, life would just be a pale shadow of its current glory. Without these devices, we'd have to actually interact with each other. Maybe enjoy the beauty of nature or something boring like that. It turns out that terrible burning orb in the sky, the sun, is fully willing and capable of bricking our precious technology. It's done so in the past, and it's likely to take a swipe at us in the future. I'm talking about solar storms, of course, tremendous blasts of particles and radiation from the sun which can interact with the Earth's magnetosphere and overwhelm anything with a wire. In fact, we got a sneak preview of this back in 1859 when a massive solar storm engulfed the Earth and ruined our old timey technology. It was known as the Carrington Event. Follow your imagination back to Thursday, September 1st, 1859. This was squarely in the middle of the Victorian age and not the awesome fictional steampunk Victorian age where spectacled gentlemen and ladies of adventure plied the skies in their steam powered brass dirigibles. No, it was the regular crappy Victorian age of cholera and child labor. Technology was making huge leaps and bounds however and the first telegraph lines and electrical grids were getting laid down. Imagine a really primitive version of today's electrical grid and internet. On that fateful morning, the British astronomer Richard Carrington turned his solar telescope to the sun and was amazed at the huge sunspot complex staring back at him, so impressed that he drew a picture of it. And while he was observing the sunspot, Carrington noticed it flash brightly right in his telescope, becoming a large kidney-shaped bright white flare. And Carrington realized he was seeing unprecedented activity on the surface of the sun. Within a minute, the activity died down and faded away. And then about five minutes later, a rural activity erupted across the entire planet. Now we're not talking about those rare northern lights enjoyed by us Canadians, the Alaskans, northern Europeans. No, we're talking about everyone, everywhere on earth, even in the tropics. In fact, the brilliant auroras were so bright, you could read a book to them. The beautiful nighttime auroras was just one effect from the monster solar flare. The other impact was that telegraph lines and electrical grids were overwhelmed by the electricity pushing through our wires. Operators got electrical shocks from the telegraph machines and telegraph paper went on fire. So what happened? The most powerful solar flare ever observed is what happened. Now a solar flare occurs because the sun's magnetic field lines get tangled up high in the solar atmosphere and in a moment the magnetic fields reorganize themselves and a huge wave of particles and radiation is released. Now flares happen in three stages. First, you get the precursor stage with a blast of soft X-ray radiation. This is followed by the impulsive stage where protons and electrons are accelerated off the surface of the sun. And finally, the decay stage with another bump of X-rays as the flare dies down. These stages can happen in just a few seconds or drag out over an hour. Remember those particles hurl off into space? They can take several hours or a few days to reach Earth and interact with our planet's protective magnetosphere and then we get to see the beautiful auroras in the sky. This geomagnetic storm causes the Earth's magnetosphere to jiggle around which drives charges through wires back and forth, burning out circuits, killing satellites, overloading electrical grids. So back in 1859, this wasn't a huge deal when our quaint technology hadn't progressed beyond the occasional telegraph tower. Today, however, it's an entirely different story. And in a second, I'm going to explain why a solar flare as powerful as the Carrington event would make for a very bad day in our modern technological society. But first, I'd like to thank Lou O'Hara, Edward Roberts, Reverend Ronald G. Crossboom, John Duff, and the rest of our 709 patrons for their generous support. If you love what we're doing and you want to help out, head over to patreon.com slash universe today. 
Today, our entire civilization depends on wires. There's wires in the hundreds of satellites flying overhead that we depend on for our communications and navigation. Our homes and businesses are connected by an enormous electrical grid. Airplanes, cars, smartphones, this camera that I'm using. Everything's electronic or controlled by electronics. So think it can't happen? Well, we got a sneak preview back in March 1989 when a much smaller geomagnetic storm crashed into the Earth. People as far south as Florida and Cuba could see auroras in the sky while North America's entire interconnected electrical grid groaned under the strain. The Canadian province of Quebec's electrical grid wasn't able to handle the load and went entirely offline. For 12 hours in the freezing Quebec winter, almost the entire province was without power. Now I'm telling you, that place gets cold. So this was really bad timing. Satellites went offline, including NASA's TDRS-1 communication satellite, which suffered 250 separate glitches during the storm. And on July 23rd, 2012, a Carrington-class solar superstorm blasted off the sun and off into space. But fortunately, it missed the Earth, and we were spared the mayhem. If a solar storm of that magnitude did strike the Earth, the cleanup might cost two trillion dollars, according to a study by the National Academy of Sciences. It's been 160 years since the Carrington event, and according to ice core samples, this was the most powerful solar flare over the last 500 years or so. Solar astronomers estimate solar storms like this happen twice a millennium, which means that we're not likely to experience another one in our lifetimes. But if we do, it'll cause worldwide destruction of technology and anyone reliant on it. So you might want to have a contingency plan with some topic starters when you can't access the internet for a few days or, or years. Locate nearby interesting nature spots to explore and enjoy while you wait for our technological civilization to be rebuilt. Now, have you ever seen an aurora in your lifetime? Give me the details of your experience in the comments. In our next episode, what's that bright star in the sky right next to the moon? How come I never noticed that before? It's Venus and it's awesome. The sun, like the rest of the universe, wants you dead. In this video, we detail all the different ways the sun is trying to kill you. In our next episode, what's that bright star? Oh.